study of the Bible, the study to show thyself approved unto God, the workman is to rightly divide. And that's a balance between the Old Testament and the New Testament. You can't read the entire New Testament and not read the Old. And you cannot read the Old Testament without the New Testament. And pretty much the New Testament quotes very vastly of the Old Testament. Now today we're going to take a simple story in the Bible, true, and we're going to take and ask ourselves, and I don't have 100% of the answers, and I'm, this is what the Lord showed me, but we're going to take an aspect from Luke chapter 1 about Zacharias and Mary. And we're going to begin in Luke chapter 1 verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Eba. And his wife was the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. So they're both Jewish. They're both of Aaron. And Zacharias is a priest. He's a Levite. All Levites are not priests. Yet all priests are Levites. And they were both righteous before God, walking in the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. I mean, they did to the best of their ability. They were perfect to a Bible sense. They had no child. They had no child. Because Elizabeth was barren. And they both were now well stricken in years. They had no child. They were stricken well in years. They were old. And it came to pass that while he was executed the priest's office before God. In the order of his course. According to the custom of the priest's office. His lot was to burn incense. When he went into the temple of the Lord. Alright so Zacharias. Is in the holy place. Not the most holy. The holy place. He steps into the courtyard. Goes through the veil. There's a table. There's the candlestick. There's the altar incense. There he is. He's in the holy place. And the whole multitude of people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord. An angel, not the angel. Standing at the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. Why? Why? Now, I know, we got, the, we got the concept of the world, and religions, and occultism. Angels are these women, they got wings, and they're just beautiful. That's not the Bible. The Bible says... And reads and records that angels are wingless and they are males. Always. People see them as males. This one is only one of two angels, if you don't count Lucifer, that are named Michael the Archangel and Gabriel. There are no other names of angels in the Bible. So this is Gabriel. Gabriel shows up in Daniel. But So Zacharias was troubled and fear fell on him. Why? Here he is. He, he's, he's got the incense. They're out there praying. And he turns around to the right and there's a man standing there. And he doesn't know it's an angel. He knows that Jesus is a man. We are told as an angel. And then later on, Gabriel say, I, you know, I'm sent by God. Zacharias doesn't know who this guy is. But he knows. He knows. He's not a Levite. And he's not a priest. So we run to Numbers 18, verse 1. 
And the Lord said unto Aaron, That thou and thy sons, and the father's, thy father's house, with thee shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary, the temple. And thou and thy sons shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. And thy brethren also the tribe of Levi, the tribe of thy father, bring thou with thee, that they may join unto thee, and ministers unto thee. But thou and thy sons with thee shall minister before the tabernacle of the witness. And they shall keep thy charge, and the charge of the, all the tabernacle. Only they shall come nigh the vessels of the sanctuary and the altar. That neither they nor ye also die. So only the priests of the family of Aaron, of the tribe of Levi, are allowed to minister and to be in that place. So Zacharias turns around. Here's this man. He knows he's not a priest. He doesn't belong there. As far as Zacharias is thinking. Okay. So. Now we move to 2 Chronicles 26, 18. We're in the Old Testament. We're in the law. The law said nobody but the sons, children of Aaron. Zacharias is of the family of Aaron. He's a priest. He turns around and sees a man there. He's not a priest. Second Chronicles 26, 18. And they withstood Uzziah the king. And said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests and the sons of Aaron that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary. For thou hast trespassed, neither shall it be for thy honor from the Lord God. All right, so Uzziah, the king, not a priest, goes into the holy place and starts offering incense. What Zacharias is doing, the priest. And Uzziah was wroth and had a censer in his hand to burn the incense. While he was wroth with the priest, Leprosy even rose up from his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord beside the incense altar. And Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked upon him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead, and they thrust him out thence. So Uzziah is not a priest, he's a king. He's in the office of the priesthood where he doesn't belong. And leprosy becomes on his forehead. And archaeologists have found where his tomb is, there's a warning. And the warning is to a fact is, do not open. Do not tamper with this man's grave because he has leprosy. So, maybe Zacharias is thinking, with this man in the holy place, either he is or both of them are in trouble. Now remember, the priest ordered the king out. The priest is there offering an incense, and there's a man there that does not need to be there or should not be there. And we have the Old Testament telling him, they kicked the king out, and the, after, before the king got kicked out, he got leprosy from the Lord. You better know where your place is with the Lord. Don't go stepping somewhere where you don't belong. So back to Luke chapter 1, verse 13. Move on to the next. Luke 1, 13. But the angel, we know it's an angel, said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. And thou shalt call his name John. Thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. 
and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. Well, it's good that Elizabeth did not get an abortion. And many of the children of Israel shall, shall he turn to the Lord their God. He shall go before him in the spirit of the power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready the people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said unto the angel. Okay, next. Zacharias. Zacharias feared. Now Zacharias' next moment. Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man. And my wife is well stricken in years. I'm an old man. My wife is old. And the angel answered him and said, I am Gabriel. That stand in the presence of God. Okay. Now Zachariah's got an idea. This is no ordinary man. There has been no judgment of God. He's sent by God. I stand in the presence of God and sent to speak unto thee to show you these glad tidings. Good news. Glad tidings. The gospel. There's a gospel that's not about the Lord Jesus Christ. I had a moron t t tell us in Sunday school, well, there's only one gospel. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, can't speak, and not able to speak, unto the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my word. Okay, so here are two old couple. They're without a child. She's barren. And he gets news that she's going to be pregnant. And he, this man that stands in the presence of God, whether he knows he's an angel or not, how am I going to know this is going to happen? He does not believe the angel or Gabriel. So Genesis 17, the Old Testament. So we already saw in, in Chronicles what happened to a man that did not belong in the holy place. That would have brought fear. Now, you're telling me that in our elderly years as a husband and wife, we're going to have a child. Okay. Genesis 17, verse 15. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call, that thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and give thee a son of her. Yea, I will, bl I will bless her. She will be thou mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. And Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? That's quite old, isn't it? A hundred years old and ninety years old. Abraham laughs. Later on, Sarah laughs. Isaac means laughter. <laughs> Every time Abraham and Sarah call Isaac, they are reminded by his name. When God told us this, we laugh. And yet it happened. So when Gabriel tells Zechariah old age, and his wife is old age, you're going to have a son. You're going to call him John. And even Isaac was pre-named. This is not nothing new. This is what began the history of the Jewish Hebrew people. The Hebrews, the Jewish people, Israel, begins by a 100-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman having a miraculous child by birth. Which for Isaac gives birth to Jacob and Jacob the twelve tribes of Israel. That's Israel's history. One of those children is called Levi. One of the children of Levi is called Aaron. And that runs us all the way to Zacharias. 
And I guarantee that Zacharias, I don't know how often, but in learning the law, Genesis is the law, that he would have quite often heard about a 100-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman having a baby. And yet he's going to stand before a man that's in the presence of God and say, how shall I know this? Abraham did not ask for a sign. The Bible says that Abraham believed God and was accounted to him. Zacharias, in a long and short sense, is even though Jews require a sign, Zacharias is like, show me a sign. Abraham didn't. So the fact is that elderly couple had a baby. Here's an elderly couple. Again, they're going to have a baby. Luke 1, 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel, there he is again, sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name is Joseph, the house of David, Jewish. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Go read the testimony of J.L. J-A-E-L. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary. All right, so both Zacharias and Mary fear this man. Here's a, here's a man that showed up in the holy place. And we showed you the scripture. That should have brought fear. Well, here Mary, where I don't know where she is. But this man comes walking up to her. And greets her in the name of the Lord. And she's, whoa. For thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. And bring forth a son. And shall call his name Jesus. Pre-named. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, Jewish. In his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, Alright, now here's Mary. How shall, I, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Alright, Mary's like, Alright, I'm going to be pregnant. I'm glad Mary didn't have an abortion. Sir, I'm going to be quite respectful of this. Sir, I've had no marriage relations with any man. I'm a virgin. And the Bible said that. Because I'm a virgin. How can I have a baby? Now tell me, before we read on, Anywhere in history, human history, Bible history, Jewish history, church history, where a virgin ever gave birth to a child. It's never happened. Yet, I can tell you a 100-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman gave birth to a child. That has happened. That's been recorded in the, in the scriptures. Zacharias. Mary says, wait a minute, I'm a virgin, I'm going to have a baby. How? And her question is completely responsible because never has a virgin given birth to a child. Never. Now they may plead, oh, I never had any relations, but they would have one. And the angel answered, said unto him, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God.
And God go. I mean, the angel goes on to say, "For with God, nothing shall be impossible." And Mary said, Behold, a handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed. Isaiah 7, 14. Now we do have scripture. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. That's exactly what Zacharias wanted. Behold, a virgin shall conceive impossible but for with God nothing shall be impossible and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel God is with us so the virgin birth that never happened ever Gabriel tells Mary that she is the chosen vessel and she believes him and she don't ask for a sign. And God says in Isaiah 7, 14, I'll give you a sign. Because the king said, well, you know, I'm not going to tempt the Lord. I don't want... And God said, all right, I'll give you a sign. Zacharias, you and your, you and your wife who are old are going to have a baby. 100-year-old Adam, I mean, 100-year-old Abraham, 90-year-old uh, Sarah had a baby. And we go back to Luke chapter 1. It says. Uh, he says in, in chapter 1. Whereby, sh whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man. And my wife is well stricken with years. Abraham and Sarah. That's your sign, Zacharias. Mary, you're going to have a baby. I'm a virgin. Okay. He didn't give her a sign. He gave her scripture. And God told the nation of Israel and Isaiah, I will give you a sign. One day, a virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And his name is going to be Emmanuel. Zacharias, I got Abraham and Sarah, but I, I need a son. By the way, elderly people can get pregnant. I don't know how old, but Mary no one who is a virgin given birth. And Mary says, okay. And then, then we read that the angel said, for with God nothing shall be impossible, saying, Mary, open up the scroll and go back to Isaiah 7.14. There is your sign. The impossible for the nation of Israel that require a sign that's the sign. And later on, you know, is this not Jesus, the son of the carpenter and, and his mother Mary? No, he's not the son of the carpenter. I mean, Joseph adopted him. But it was before Joseph and her came together. And Mary believed it all along. You know what part of, of the gospel to believe? is not only that Jesus Christ suffered and died, he did. He was buried, he was. And he arose again, he did. He seated at the right hand of the Father. He is God. And he was virgin born. There are religions out there that, that, that teach that Mary had some kind of extramarital affair, or it was Joseph, or it was this, that was that. Man, if you believe that, you have not believed the biblical Jesus. 
There are people out there that believe Jesus is European. He's American. He's black. That's not the biblical Jesus. John says he came unto his own and his own received him not. That's Jewish. So, <coughs> excuse me. We see, we see Zacharias that the Old Testament explains to us the reaction of Zacharias and yet some people don't read the Old Testament. And then we see the contrast. Why was Zacharias chastened to become dumb? And Mary pretty much asked the same question. How do I know that? I mean, without asking for a sign. And the angel explains it. Okay, impossibility. God can do the impossibility. This is how it's going to happen. And Mary's like, okay. Mary had the same faith that Abraham did. Abraham didn't ask for a sign. Mary didn't ask for a sign. And this is something that the Lord laid on my heart, and I hope you get something out of it. 